Welcome to The Money Hour with host Tina Mitchell and co-host Keelan Harvey. Tina Mitchell, MLO 145420, and Keelan Harvey, MLO 133075, are licensed loan originators with Gateway Mortgage Group, LLC, and MLS 7233. The views expressed by the speakers on the following program are those of the speakers and do not necessarily reflect the views of Gateway Mortgage Group, LLC, nor are they necessarily endorsed by Gateway Mortgage Group, LLC. Now, in the studio, local mortgage experts, Tina Mitchell and Keelan Harvey. Welcome to The Money Hour on 1150 AM KKNW, the Saturday, May 18th show. I am your host, Tina Mitchell. And I am your co-host, Keelan Harvey. Bringing in local experts on everything that has to do with the economy and your your money. We're here to help you build a strong economy. And if you're hearing our show at a different time or day, you are listening to a rebroadcast, but we're here to answer any questions or connect you with the guests that we have on the show. Please call the show at one 855 400 1150. Again, that's 1 855 400 1150 or online at themoneyhour.com. And our lineup for today's show, we have Mike Pattison of Master Builder Association, New Laws That Help Housing. Also in studio, we have Laura Curry of Difficult Happens, Business, Bullies, and Boundaries. Our last guest in studio is Holly Fern of Linmac Commercial, all about real estate investing. Great information and great guests in studio. Again, for more information or to contact our guests, please call the show at one 855 411 Again, that's one 855 411 or online at the Money Hour. Dot com. Let's start out today with a little money chat. Money. Money. So, Keelan, my co-host, what do you got going on today for our money chat? Well, personal, business, what? I think I'm going to go um, personal, but kind of leaning into business. And uh, Ooh, I had a tragedy to triumph story and Hmm. you know i appreciate your coaching so much and you know all that you have taught me and i've learned from your courses um yesterday i don't know uh, if you listen to every single one of our shows about i don't know two month and a half ago uh, maybe even two months ago uh, i got invited to play in an international soccer Uh tournament and uh came back and recovered in the first game i played in after i recovered from a previous injury I sprained my LCL, which I thought it was like over, like no more yeah. international tournaments done. And just yesterday, um, I went to my physical therapy and went through a pretty hardcore test, and I'm good to go. And um, it kind of made me reflect on things a little bit and how I didn't really skip a beat. You know, of course, it, it happens, and you're like, wow, first well, game. Well, you did miss a day at the office. I, well, that. that's yeah. If we consider that a beat, I definitely miss <laughs> one of them. Um, and you know, and I just focused on the solution and I worked so hard to get back and, and get in shape and, you know, and now I look back, I'm like, I have lost like 15 pounds. I'm mm-hmm. in better shape than I like was when I started. Yeah. So again, kind of coming back from tragedy to triumph, all mm-hmm. about your mindset and yep. focusing your energy where you put your energy expands. Mm-hmm. And it was such uh, a, a good example of you know, when things happen and how you can put things in perspective, I'm ready to rock and roll now. Like, I feel I great. I love that. And um, it is a triumph after all. Yeah, I love that. And that's that's really great. We never know what uh, each other is going to kind of bring in. It's just a spontaneous time to do a little, a little chat. And we call it Money Chat because the show is called The Money Hour. Um, but it actually flows in perfectly with me because I have a big announcement to make. I'm going to be starting a new podcast. Nothing's happening with the radio show. We're still going to be here. This is 10 <laughs> years running and it's going to be another 10, 20. I don't know. As long as I'm working, uh, we'll be doing The Money Hour. But this is, uh, it's called The Inspirational Break. And each week I'm going to share an inspiration for the week and I've created the space for you to take a few minutes just for yourself and I want to share the inspiration behind uh, my inspirational break and it really is going to be a few minutes it'll be five minutes or so so just an inspiration for the week Uh, but I have a 12-month program where I help uh, women in transitional housing majority of them well all of them they have children as well so they're coming off of the street and they're the best of the best they're you know we know that there's a one percentile in business one percent that are killing it you have the 20 percent that are doing 80 percent 
percent of the business, and then you have the eighty percent that are getting twenty percent of the business. So a majority of people are having a difficult time uh, surviving in life. Well, when it comes on the street, it's the people that live on the street and have tragedies uh, trying to keep a roof over their head. It's the same thing. You have a one percent tell the best of the best, and I'm really passionate about the work I do with these women because they have made it off the street. And so I have a twelve month program that I take them through each month. I spend with them um, on in a connection to my keynote tragedy to triumph and each month there's a uh, a workshop and something that we work on in spirit of tragedy to triumph and then they can work on it together I always talk about them being a community because they're all living in, in the homes together and they can support each other and it's just a really really beautiful thing um, and then next month they come back and do something else but I thought I, I really wanted to have something that could keep the women inspired uh, for every week that we're not together and then once they complete the program uh, still a place that we can stay connected Connected. And so I want to give a shout out to uh, Lori Hardy, which here is at the at the studio as well. She has her own podcast show and she's just going to do mine for me. So I'm going to come in right after the recording here of the money hour. So one time it all about the high efficiency, which is my business coaching program. So I'm just really, really excited about it. And uh, first show, which is going to be today, I'm just going to share my story because, you know, you want to be vulnerable and open up and uh, we each have a story and being it's going to be really connecting our around uh, your story and your life and inspiration and what you can do throughout the week to really stay inspired and stay in a great spot. So uh, tune in for that. I'm really excited for that. And that is our money chat. Coming up next on the money hour, we have Mike Pattison of Master Builder Association right here on 1150 AM KKNW after this short break. Do you need diversity in your investment portfolio? Real estate can be a very solid investment, and Seattle is one of the strongest real estate markets in the country. The secret to making wise decisions is having a proven real estate investment expert by your side. Holly Furin of Linmac Commercial LLC is no ordinary real estate broker. She has more than two decades of real estate experience with sales and property management. She can help you navigate the booming Seattle real estate market to find golden properties, houses, or condos that are best suited to lease as a yearly residence or vacation rental. Whether you want a short-term investment or one that generates income for years, Holly Fearing can help you find the best property and negotiate the purchase. Then she'll market your home to prospective renters and screen tenant applications. By standing between you and the tenant, emotion is removed from the equation. You're not looking for a new best friend. You're looking for someone who will pay rent on time, maintain the property, and be a respectful neighbor. Holly Furin's tenants' rent checks have never gone beyond 30 days past due. During your free consultation with Linmac Commercial LLC, Holly will discuss your immediate needs and long-term goals. She'll deliver a comprehensive real estate investment plan custom-tailored to work for you. This is Holly Fearon with Linmac Commercial LLC. If you're interested in investing in Seattle area property, please contact me at 206-381-1438. That's 206-381-1438. You're listening to The Money Hour with your host, Tina Mitchell, and co-host, Keelan Harvey, on Alternative Talk AM 1150. Now, back to the show with local mortgage experts, Tina Mitchell and Keelan Harvey. Welcome back to The Money Hour at 1150 AM KKNW, the Saturday, May 18th show. I am your host, Tina Mitchell. And I'm your co-host, Keelan Harvey. It is a great day to talk about money, and that's what the show is all about, how to make money, save money, so you can have a better quality of life for you and your family. If you're hearing our show at a different time or day, you are listening to a rebroadcast, but we're here to chat with you or connect you with the guests that we have on the show today. Please call the show at 1-855-411-50. Again, that's 1-855-411-50 or online at themoneyhour.com. In studio right now, we have Mike Pattison of Master Builders Association, New Laws That Help Housing. Mike, thank you so much for coming back. It's my pleasure to be here. And really excited about the uh, the topic today. So a little bit about Mike. Mike is uh, the Government Affairs Manager with Master Builders Association of King and Snohomish Counties. He previously has served as a lobbyist for the Rural Tour Association and worked at the House, the State House Representatives. Mike is a Seattle native native and graduated from Seattle University. 
So, Mike, is super excited to get your perspective with the Master Builders Association. We obviously we have a lot of agents here that come in with their pers- perspective, but it's great to get your insight. Uh, state legislature just wrapped up its work for the year. Was it a good year for housing? It was a great year for housing, and really, I think it's going to go beyond, far beyond this year. Uh, we passed bills that we've been trying to pass for several years, but because of uh, the intensity of our housing crisis, there is a real urgency to act this year. So uh, it was a good year, and I think it's going to lead for to even better years to come. Yeah, so exciting. Uh, Mike, so let's talk about the bills um, at the legislation passed that will help our sl- uh, our supply and shortage in inventory because it's just been really, really challenging. And I know that we've seen more inventory, but we're still by no means where the market should be as far as the housing. So what, what happened? What right. passed? Yeah, I see all those MLS numbers and the, the number of <clears throat> the amount of inventory is historically low. So yes. what, what passed this year is very much going to help. And, and the most important bill that passed was at long last condo liability reform. We yes. have been trying to move this for several years. And finally, everybody came together and actually unanimously passed condo liability reform. And what that means, the bottom line is insurers are going to come back to the market and insure condo projects. That's why they weren't being built <clears throat> under the million or million and a half price point. That missing, that critical missing middle was unable to get a condo or affordable housing. And so we think this is the best step forward in several years to uh, <clears throat> produce that kind of housing. It's, it's much needed. Yes. Uh, you know, the inventory is low and there's need. You know, our population continues to grow. And, and uh, so we're very excited about this, uh, this bill passing. Great. That is awesome because that's going to address some of the affordability issues as prices have gone nuts. Obviously, we have a pretty good gap and condos can fill a huge gap of that pretty quick. Mm-hmm. What can we expect going forward on this condo liability pass, a bill that passed? And, you know, what does that look like for our near future here? Yeah, it's going to be a process. Uh, builders haven't been building them, uh, so they're going to have to ramp up. But there, there is there is pent up demand. So we know my members are excited to jump into action and build this product. What it's going to take is insurers coming back to the market and having the confidence that this legislation is going to protect us all and that we can get this going and keep it going. Yeah, because the challenge was is if anybody was suing, the HOA sued uh, the builders, it was so, so expensive and for that insurance to make sure that they were protected. And so if builders were building condos, they were building really, really, really expensive ones and nothing in the affordable, the affordable arena, correct? That's right. Uh, when you're building at a million or two million, you can afford a certain higher level of risk. But yes. when you when you're... Uh, dealing with small margins and the the more affordable product, you cannot tolerate that risk. Yeah. You can't get a bank loan if you can't show you're going to make at least a little bit of profit. Exactly. And, and, and so, so this is you know it's it's a technical issue, but it was resolved very well this year, and yeah, so we're, so we're very we're very excited. And and there's a, a big social component too. Uh, yeah. People that couldn't get housing can get housing. Yeah. And it's also going to be an investment opportunity for people as well. They can build wealth and uh, hopefully retirement. Yes. Yeah. Great, great news. So let's talk about the urban urban destiny and bill and how that is going to help. Yeah. So there was a a large omnibus bill that we put together with the help of Representative Fitzgibbon from West Seattle, Senator Palumbo and Senator Kuderer from here on the east side that uh, is going to help form partnerships with the building community in cities. It's going to incentivize them to build denser, more affordable housing. Uh Uh, And it does that by uh, providing grants to city for planning efforts. Uh, You know, we sometimes we think, oh, it's, you know, just pass a lot so you can do this. Uh, Well, there's more to it than that. There's Uh a long process and and code writing and public outreach. And some cities just don't have those resources to do all that work. So this bill is going to be a great catalyst for builders, realtors, cities working together, plan for affordable housing. So there's an entire menu of options that cities can can pick from and, and get these grants and employ them. So we're very excited about that. Uh, we think uh, you're going to see uh, really good quality, affordable development eventually come uh-huh. online because of this. Yeah, and isn't it true? I mean, there's other cities that are doing this at such a successful and high level, and it was just crazy to see what was happening and how we were not taking 
the lead of these other cities to really be able to help with this issue that we're having. And so is that where what some of this is came from, that they're finally... Exactly. Some, some cities have long focused on the housing crisis and others yeah. are late to the game, you know, to be perfectly blunt. So we want yeah. to bring everybody along and there's yeah. no excuses to not do good planning now. The yes. resources are there. So uh, it's not just Seattle and Bellevue doing mm-hmm. it. Hopefully we can get all of our cities going the same direction and, and pr- providing opportunities. Yes. So this is all great news, Mike. Um, were there on the flip side of that coin, were there any legislation that was passed that could be a concern for us? Yeah. So. Uh, People that are investing, buying and selling property should pay attention. The real estate excise tax is changing, and that's real dollars and cents. And so it actually provided relief for lower levels of housing. Things Mm -hmm. under $100,000, they are going to get a break on the real estate excise tax. That's good. But to pay for that, things at the higher end shifted higher. So uh, one, if you're doing a real estate transaction this year, you should pay attention because your rates may well change. So um, be sure and be in touch with your agent and your escrow company about that. See if uh, acting before or after January 1st is going to affect you. It probably will. Yeah. And so it's the um, no more easy excise tax, just estimate because it's a different scenario. But if you're listening, just know on the high end, if you're, um, uh, you know, selling a property, the uh, in the the process that it's only the amount that's over and above it's taxed at that higher amount. So it's really not as bad as it may right. seem when you see those numbers, right? Right, exactly. Yeah. But, you know, uh, someone watching every dollar should pay attention. Of course. Yeah. The man's always got to get us, doesn't he, Tina? Well, you know, that, that tax guy. Oh, it was too funny because we were uh, off subject, but totally on subject. I was at the Women's Council of World Tours. Uh, shout out for the organization because they are amazing. And shout out <laughs> to... Uh, uh, Michelle is the president at the Metro chapter, and she brings in some really, really great speakers. Uh, and uh, they were talking about all this conversation that's going on behind the scenes, but not really behind the scenes with um, the IRS. And so I want to give a you know little a shout out to anybody that works for the IRS because they really are they really work really hard, and they're trying to keep up with all of this stuff and change with all of the uh, new things that are happening with the tax law. So um, normally we don't have great things to say about the IRS, but <laughs> The people that work for the IRS and are going through all of this change, a uh, lot going on. So, Mike, how do the laws passed in Olympia translate to action at a local level? Yeah, that, <clears throat> that's a really good question. What we do in Olympia really is the framework for what happens at the local level because homes, condos, everything else is permitted by cities and counties. So this yes. is all about leading to action at the local level. So you're going to see cities start analyzing what works best for them. Do they want to allow more zoning for condos? Uh, Do they want to uh, increase density in single-family neighborhoods? So you're going to start seeing a lot of planning activities at cities uh, fairly quickly, I would think, on how to implement and and what's best for each community. And and it's going to be different in every community. So, you know, if you care about your neighborhood and or you want to see more housing, all of these issues, they will affect you. So pay attention to what's going on at City Hall because something's coming and yeah. uh, everyone can have a voice in what uh, their neighborhood's going to look like. Yes. That's really cool. The ground rules are set. Now we just got to watch it play out in all these different neighborhoods and see how it's going to work, right? Yeah, right. And we spend we, we spend three or four months a year in Olympia yes. as, as advocates, but the rest of the year, we're at the local level making sure that uh, this transition is a smooth one, smooth one and what's right for the community. So, yeah. uh, And kind of doing the education as you're doing now and thank you so much Mike for everything that you know do behind the scenes and then coming in front of the scenes to really be able to share what's happening yeah my, my pleasure yeah uh, one you know, <clears throat> another thing that that I never lose sight of is you know we can go into Olympia and, and pass bills but it's also incumbent on us to remind cities you have these tools yes. make sure and use them don't let yeah. them gather dust yeah good advice that's really exciting so it sounds like we've had a fantastic year this year uh what are we looking forward to next what's next year's agenda at this point you know we're already planning for next year Uh, i'm sure you are (laughs) as soon as soon as the the gavel came down uh and we started planning for next year uh you know we want to further address our workforce issues Uh, we don't have enough skilled workers and we have a lot of building going on and uh we don't have enough skilled workers to, to build it. Uh, yeah. uh, so that so that's a concern. We So we want to beef up technical and uh, 
trade skills the labor out side. there. Yeah, and, and those are great jobs. Uh, and college and PhDs aren't for everybody, but there are jobs that pay just as much in the trades. So we, we want to expand those opportunities. Yeah, and you know, isn't it interesting that there's, you know, there's always a, a, a challenge with something. There's always opportunities with those challenges. But, you know, software engineering is just, I mean, everybody is going into that. And so we're going to see some of these trades, just like you said, that we're going to have a shortage. And so we may... Um, have the ability, but not the other part of the ability to make it all come together. Right. Yeah. <clears throat> exactly. Then just quickly, two other things that we're looking at next year. We got a little bit of momentum for them this year, but yeah. uh, accessory dwelling units or mother-in-law units. Mm-hmm. Yes. Uh, you know, I just marked that down. What about those ADUs? Yeah. So there was a bill this year and, and it was heard and it made a little progress, but sometimes it takes a couple of sessions and yeah. some education to get that passed. You know, we've done focus groups and uh, people love them when they see pictures of them. Yeah. Uh, so we're we think as we bring more awareness and education to to the public and our state legislature that it's going to be embraced and we can get this across the finish line, it can re- be a real big uh, help in our uh, supply crisis. Yes. Uh, you know, so much of our, our land is built on, but if you think about it, Maybe not so much because there's a yeah. lot of big yards and big there lots is. that can certainly accommodate mother-in-law units, which provides rental income for yes. the, the owner of, of the home and, and great investment opportunities, as well as the social benefit of housing people. Yeah, well, and it's um, personally for myself. I have a really beautiful big house, but not a big lot. So we couldn't do that. And I would never consider selling my house unless if I could really find something with an ADU because my husband's mom is getting at that stage at some point in time my mom will follow behind and you know we're they're not going to be going upstairs and all of that so i'm really excited to see what happens uh, in that arena so mike as we wrap up our time here uh, with you what's the outlook for continued work on the affordable crisis yeah despite all the good things that happen in Olympia this year and will happen at the local level, we know that it's, there's no silver bullet. Uh, yes. Homes are too expensive. Incomes aren't keeping pace. So we're going to be at it uh, full time every yeah. day yeah. Uh, working at it. Prices aren't coming down, but we hope that that we can afford or uh, <clears throat> generate more units. So the supply and demand uh, balance is, is more in line. And, is, and, and yeah. that's that's the real focus is, is getting that into balance where we uh, where people at least have a chance at affordability. Yes, so true. Well, Mike, thank you again so much for all of the hard work uh, that you're doing over at Master Builders Association and for coming here on the show. Look forward to having you back soon. It's always a pleasure to be here. Thank you. Thank you. Coming up next in the money are business, bullies, and boundaries. We have Laura Curry of Difficult Happens right here at 1150 AM KKNW after this short break. When you work in the high-stress fields of mortgages, real estate, or finances, your clients come to you in a heightened emotional state. Your ability to communicate with them effectively directly impacts your bottom line. If your frontline staff is unprepared to identify and navigate tricky conversations with your clients, you are leaving money on the table, creating undue stress, and impacting productivity. Laura Curry of Difficult Happens trains you and your staff in how to calm tense situations, navigate a conflict, and set you up for success so that every interaction is more productive, profitable, and stress-free. There is a better way to communicate. Go to difficulthappens.com and click the Work With Me tab and get started today. I'm Laura Curry of Difficult Happens. Don't you deserve less stress today? To work with me, just go to difficulthappens.com and click the Work With Me tab. Get started today. You're listening to The Money Hour with your host, Tina Mitchell, and co-host, Keelan Harvey, on Alternative Talk AM 1150. Now, back to the show with local mortgage experts, Tina Mitchell and Keelan Harvey. Welcome back to The Money on 1150 AM KKNW at the Saturday, May 18th show. I am your host, Tina Mitchell. And I am your co-host, Keelan Harvey. You're a local mortgage experts bringing in expert advice and inside knowledge on today's, today's events and how they can affect your money. If you're hearing our show at a different time or day, you are listening to a rebroadcast, but we're here to answer any questions or connect you with the guests that we have on the show. Please call the show at one 855 411150. Again, that's 1 855 411150 or online at themoneyara.com. In studio right now, we have Laura Curry of Difficult Happens Business Bullies and Boundaries. 
Laura, you've been in uh, studio a few times and just really appreciate you here and the information that you provide. Thank you so much for coming back. Absolutely. You know I love talking about difficult stuff. Yes, you do, <laughs> and you are good at it. Uh, and a little bit about Laura is she's a trainer, speaker, podcaster, and the author of Difficult Happens, How Triggers, Boundaries, and Emotional Impact You Every Day. With 27 plus years of experience in high conflict positions, she has a unique an intuitive understanding of why people act and react the way they do. She is passionate about helping people communicate in an increasingly reactionary world, make honest and meaningful connections, live with less stress, and establish strong boundaries. So, Laura, you help train people in high-stress fields to understand why people act and react the way that they do in order to strengthen essential communication skills needed. Why is this... Uh, more important now than ever. You know, especially in the high conflict fields, everybody's so tense. Everybody's stressed out. You know, we just heard from Mike about the housing crisis and a lot of the bills that may or may not be passed. And people are just more tense right now. And as the elections kind of wrap or start to ramp up and as we get more and more conflict it, in especially you think of the high risk fields like realtors or mortgages or yes. finance yeah. or they're already stressed from the inside yes. and they're getting stressed from the outside and when your clientele comes to you stressed out well you're going to match that stress right mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. you start communicating ineffectively or you start to miscommunicate with each other it leads to a disconnect which leads to conflict yeah so let's talk about what the essential boundaries people who work in high stress fields like mortgage, real estate, finances, mm -hmm. must have. Yeah, it's funny because whenever I try and say, you know, the high stress fields, it's like, yeah, all of them. I was going <laughs> to say there's so many of them. <laughs> right, right. Everybody thinks theirs is the only one. Yes, yes. So the boundaries that we all have are, you know, your physical boundaries, your emotional boundaries, your um, intellectual boundaries, material boundaries, and time boundaries. But the most critical boundary that you need, frankly, I think as a human being, but as a leader in particular, are your internal boundaries. Mm -hmm. No, you know, don't say yes to something when you mean no. Know who you are and what you can do and, and what you're able to offer and what you can ask of other people. But check in on your own internal boundaries because when you overstep those, it can lead to a lot of internal conflict, which will manifest in external conflict. Yeah, and that's so good, uh, Laura, because really embracing who you are, what you represent, uh, what your um, your core values are, you really need to set up your business around that because there's enough clients out there for everybody mm -hmm. and we're really not all alike and, and some people are going to have cer certain beliefs or the way that they do business. And um, I know in the real estate space, uh, especially, and I've, you know, we work in that so much, obviously, uh, in the mortgage industry, that with real estate agents, there, there are certain things that you can have an industry leader, two industry leaders in the industry, and they have a totally different look mm -hmm. on strategies in whether listing or buying a home. And so you have to really decide what strategy and what direction that you're going to go. I'm just using this as one example. Mm -hmm. um, and then really, if if the clients don't fall within that, then you've got to be willing to let them go, right? Absolutely. I think that you have to have a mission, vision, and yeah. values yeah. for yourself and your company. And that way, if you are a little confused whether or not you should take this deal or take this client or break up with this client, run it by your mission, vision, and values. If that's your guiding light, that's your guiding principles. Yes. If it doesn't match up with it, it's an easy decision to make. Yeah. Now, it, I should say it's a simple decision to make. Mm. Simple doesn't mean easy. Yes, yeah, you know? nothing's <laughs> easy but simple. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, yeah. Great correction there, uh, Laura. I love how you talk about micro boundary breaches and just micro boundaries in general. Um, can you talk about micro boundary breach and why it is the most dangerous? part of any breach or boundary. Yeah, yeah, because it's so easy to excuse or dismiss. Well, you know, they talk to me that way. They, they're just having a bad day. Maybe, you know, I'm not going to I'm not going to address it. But when you let those little tiny things go, you're basically teaching people how they can treat you. So mm -hmm. it's understandable with those in your inner circle, those that you love. You have a rhythm and you do forgive them and you can later bring it up to them if you like. But when it comes to your clientele, your staff, your coworkers, uh, you need to make sure to address those micro boundary breaches immediately and respectfully. Just say, hey, 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 you may be having a bad day, but please don't speak to me in that manner. 
Yeah. You know, you need to make sure to address it right away. Or like when you did say yes to something when you really meant no, even if you've already done it, you can go back and say, mm -hmm. I know I told you I was able to do this. I am no longer able to do that. You can apologize, yeah. but, but draw your boundaries firmly. Yeah, so um, so true. So I think, and that can all add up too. So really the premise of that is catching it early, really catching it early, getting on top of it and setting up those boundaries before it blows up into something bigger. Mm -hmm. I mean, you're really mm -hmm. just micro boundaries, all those little yeses that we say, the one really maybe inside we don't feel that way. That's huge. That's Follow fantastic. Follow your gut. Follow yeah. your gut. And yeah. by inches you go miles. Well, yes. that works with boundary breaches too. Mm -hmm. Of course by it inches does. inches they can be eviscerated. So. Yeah. yeah. So, Laura, work. preparation uh, up front obviously is the key to everything. So when it comes to preparation and success, what can you do to prepare up front uh, before working and meeting with clients? Yeah, you know, this is so important, especially in the high stress fields. I'll, I'll use the example of, you know, like a property manager or a realtor. People, you know what you know, and sometimes your clientele doesn't know. Mm -hmm. And so you need to create safety for them, especially in these high stress situations. So preframe, let them know what, what it's gonna look like to work with you, what they can expect along the way, what you're going to expect from them, what your accessibility is, mm -hmm. what the best way is to contact you. Just doing a little preframing, it really creates safety and it helps you draw those boundaries, right? Yes. You know, you want to say, feel free to email me and I will get back to you within 24 to 48 hours, mm -hmm. right? Right away, they may be thinking, I'll just text her when I have a question at 1030 at night and I want to answer mm -hmm. right away. <laughs> well, it's like on a voicemail that says, if you don't get me live, feel free for a quicker response, text me. And I'm like, why do people put that in their voicemail? Because what it's saying is I'm available all the time via text. Right. And it, you're telling and and how they can treat you. And this you. is a generic <laughs> voicemail that never gets changed, yeah. you know. And so, yeah, you're really thinking about the words that you're communicating because people hear it the way they want to hear it. Exactly. Mm -hmm. So, Lori, you say that everybody has a conflict personality type. What are the different conflict personality types? We sure do. I'm, you know, these come up when you get defensive or mm -hmm. reactionary. And they are the perfectionist, the pleaser, the avoider, and the victim. Whenever I outline these, right away people go, I know who I am yeah. and I know who I don't like. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, you have the love languages, personality types and all of that. So why, you know, why not uh, have these as well? So how does your own conflict personality style help create a difficult client? Yeah, so I am of the pleaser variety. Shocker. You know? <laughs> <laughs> but my opposite is the victim uh, conflict personality type. When we come Opposite in, me, you, I mean, that's the, the hardest one for you exactly. to connect with. Yeah. Yeah. What happens is we get into a dance with each other. Mm -hmm. I'm trying to fix everything. They're trying to explain their victimology. And vi uh -huh. victims are also blamers. Um, and pleasers are also fixers. You know, that's oh. they kind of go together. So we can get into this dance where we're stuck in a conflict loop of me overstepping their boundaries by trying to jump in and fix something that's not mine to fix. Yeah. Robbing them from natural consequences. Yeah. And the victim uh, oversteps my boundaries because they're just trying to show me what they fear. Mm -hmm. And instead of listening to that and seeing it and naming it, you know, I end up, you know, it's that dance back and forth and back and forth. And it's the same with the perfectionist and the avoider. You know, the perfectionist's like, no, 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 all you got to do is X, Y, Z, PDQ, right yeah. here, here's a list. And the avoider's like, yeah, yeah, sure, go ahead and email that to me, right? And they get into this dance of avoiding and trying to be perfect. So you, once you know what your conflict personality type mm -hmm. is, you can prep yourself. If you get a client who comes in the door and you're like, uh-oh, Victim 101, here mm -hmm. we go. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you can just kind of settle yourself and just turn the music off. Don't dance. Yeah. That's really interesting how you're literally feeding into each other's, you know, your, uh, how do you say it? Your Personality personalities mm -hmm. and uh, and perpetuating the issue. I am, I'm definitely um, I don't, a perfectionist, I would say. And so now I'm aware of that. That's really useful. Thank you, Laura. <laughs> you're welcome. Uh, <laughs> what are some common tactics that business bullies use? This is my, <laughs> this is one of my pet peeves because being a pleaser, when someone tells me, okay, so can you do this for me? And I draw my boundaries firmly and no, but I can do this. And they go, okay, great. And yet they completely ignore what you said and they were, <laughs> they basically go with what they said originally. So overstepping your boundaries and ignoring you and reframing what you have said you're willing to do. Oftentimes bullies will hear what they want to hear 
and reframe what you've said in their own lexicon so that they mm -hmm. can, you know, basically rewrite history. So you really got to, it goes along with those micro boundary breaches. You really got to pay attention to that and say, oh, you have that almost right. No, I'm not going to be available to you Saturday at 8 a.m. I don't mm -hmm. work weekends. However, I'll be there Friday at 8 a.m. or, you know, whatever yeah. the topic is at hand. So, Laura, what, why is it important to train your frontline staff before, first before your senior staff? Yeah, so most... Talk about frontline staff and what that is versus your senior staff. Yeah, so all you professionals, you're mm -hmm. the senior staff. Okay. Your frontline staff is going to be the secretary, the person who answers the phone, mm -hmm. maybe your peripheral people. So if you have, again, I'll, I'll use the example of a realtor. If you've got a stager or some of these, a, a house cleaner or... Inspector. Exactly. Mm -hmm. You know, they're your peripherals, but yes. they're your frontline because they're going to be dealing with your clientele. Yes. Well, and if they're at a higher emotional state, they have assumptions and expectations automatically. Mm -hmm. And this person represents you. Well, if they are just going about doing their job and then they get triggered into reacting in a negative way to your client, who's going to have to fix that? Who's going to have to pay for that? Yeah. But if you just train them, just, just what we're talking about right here, right now, about boundaries, about pre-framing a little bit to say, I'm going to be in your house. It's going to take about an hour. It's yes. going to look like this and create that safety. That's all it takes. Yeah. You, you could, you can save yourself from creating a situation to where you've made a lot of your subs unhappy and your client unhappy with just a little bit of knowledge. And, you know, in the spirit of one-time being, it's a, you know, again, a coaching program that I teach for business professionals on time management, business efficiency um, at the highest level possible. The great news is, is it because this show might sound a little bit, oh my gosh, there's so much behind the scenes and things that I have to do, but there really isn't. It's just watching for these challenging situations that are not one-off, but instead they're the same ones that are going to continue to happen yes. over and over and recognizing it and then being willing to figure out what do I need to do to make this come out right? Mm -hmm. And then you've landed it, you've got it, and you can move on and just wait for the next one to come up. And eventually you have a whole business model that is one timed and very efficient and thought out front up front of what to do. Right. Exactly. You can yeah. even have a swipe file of what it looks like to work with me. Yes. And you just share that with your frontline staff yeah. and they share that with the clients. Yep. Yep. Love easy, that. Easy. So, Laura, you talk about appreciation language. Can you tell us a little bit about that? What's appreciation language and why is it so important to know? You, going back to your frontline staff, it's mm -hmm. really important. People like to be res appreciated in a certain way. It's kind of like the love languages, right? Mm -hmm. I'm a huge acts of service person. Someone buys me flowers. I'm like, great, something I can watch die. Thanks so much. You know, <laughs> 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 I'm not a gift giving type. You know, that's not my appreciation language. However, if you swing by and grab me a coffee on the way into work, well, I feel really appreciated and seen. Mm -hmm. So it's important to know how people like to be appreciated so that you can show genuine appreciation it really goes a long way to creating strong relationships yeah so Laura we've got about 60 seconds left here uh, wrap up and I want to ask you one more question two yeah. most important phrases you should not be afraid to use thank you and I don't know Love it. On that <laughs> <Nice>. note, <laughs> Laura, thank you so much for coming in and so excited to have you here um, representing my power of lunch and learns with my real estate agents and definitely having you come back again. Absolutely. It's so much fun. And uh, coming up next on the money are we have Holly Fern of uh, Lynn Mac Commercial right here on 1150 AM KKNW after this short break. When you work in the high-stress fields of mortgages, real estate, or finances, your clients come to you in a heightened emotional state. Your ability to communicate with them effectively directly impacts your bottom line. If your frontline staff is unprepared to identify and navigate tricky conversations with your clients, you are leaving money on the table, creating undue stress, and impacting productivity. Laura Curry of Difficult Happens trains you and your staff in how to calm tense situations, navigate a conflict, and set you up for success so that every interaction is more productive, profitable, and stress-free. There is a better way to communicate. Go to difficulthappens.com and click the Work With Me tab and get started today. I'm Laura Curry of Difficult Happens. Don't you deserve less stress today? To work with me, just go to difficulthappens.com and click the Work With Me tab. Get started today. 
you need diversity in your investment portfolio? Real estate can be a very solid investment, and Seattle is one of the strongest real estate markets in the country. The secret to making wise decisions is having a proven real estate investment expert by your side. Holly Furin of Lynn Mac Commercial LLC is no ordinary real estate broker. She has more than two decades of real estate experience with sales and property management. She can help you navigate the booming Seattle real estate market to find golden properties, houses, or condos that are best suited to lease as a yearly residence or vacation rental. Whether you want a short-term investment or one that generates income for years, Holly Fearing can help you find the best property and negotiate the purchase. Then she'll market your home to prospective renters and screen tenant applications. By standing between you and the tenant, a motion is removed from the equation. If you're not looking for a new best friend, you're looking for someone who will pay rent on time, maintain the property, and be a respectful neighbor. Holly Furin's tenants' rent checks have never gone beyond 30 days past due. During your free consultation with Lynn Mac Commercial LLC, Holly will discuss your immediate needs and long-term goals. She'll deliver a comprehensive real estate investment plan custom tailored to work for you. This is Holly Fearon with Lynn Mac Commercial LLC. If you're interested in investing in Seattle area property, please contact me at 206-381-1438. That's 206-381-1438. You're listening to The Money Hour with your host, Tina Mitchell, and co-host, Keelan Harvey, on Alternative Talk AM 1150. Now, back to the show with local mortgage experts, Tina Mitchell and Keelan Harvey. Welcome back to The Money Hour on 1150 AM KKNW, the Saturday, May 18th show. I am your host, Tina Mitchell. And I am your co-host, Keelan Harvey. Your local mortgage experts. We are here to help you build a strong financial blueprint, one week and one show at a time. If you're hearing our show at a different time or day, you are listening to a rebroadcast, but we're here to answer any questions or connect you with the guests that we have on the show. Please call the show at 1-855-411-50. Again, that's one 855 Four hundred eleven fifty, or online at themoneyera.com. In studio right now, we have Holly Fern of Lynn Mac Commercial, and we're going to be talking about real estate investing. Holly, welcome back. Thanks for having me. Yeah, everybody in studio today has been here before. No first-time guests. It's kind of nice. Yeah. yeah. So a little bit about Holly. Holly is a third-generation real estate broker and property manager in Seattle at the Lynn Mac Commercial Office. She has over 25 years of personal experience as a property manager. She helps her clients acquire investment properties as well as finding tenants for them and manage those real estate uh, rental properties. She appreciates the relationships she develops with her clients. Holly is heavily involved in community service as well as being a Girl Scout troop leader. I always get a big smile on my face when I say that because Girl Scouts was really important to me. How fun. Well, let's get to know Holly a little bit. How did you get into real estate investing, Holly? Yeah, well, my grandfather was a real estate broker and investor, and he taught me a lot about real estate and property management. And he really impressed upon me that the real estate market is better than the stock market. So, you're, yeah, it's like gambling, right? The, the gains come back quicker and bigger than other investments anywhere else because no other investment can you leverage someone else's money and make instant mm -hmm. equity on an asset that you don't own outright. So to make the most out of your investment is to hold on to it for the long term. Getting inspired by like the show Fixer Upper makes people excited about getting creative, but flipping homes in the short term makes the least amount of money in the long run. Holly, I, that's exactly why I got into the mortgage business. I was financial advisor for four years. You know, 6% compound over time is great. That's all exciting and everything. But it's not like homes get me excited. It's tangible. You know, I flipped a couple homes. You make some big money over a couple months. It's just, it just feels safer. just feels like such a better investment. Um, you're not relying on world markets and what's happening in China. To a degree, we are with rates oh, and yep. things like that. <laughs> but... but but I mean, it, not necessarily on more of a micro level. You know, we kind of know what's going on, and I feel like there's less risk. So good on you for that. 
Yeah, yeah that's a, it, real estate definitely is a great risk. I, I believe in the versification and having a little bit of everything, but yeah. unlike the stock and buying a stock, um, you really don't know what's going to happen. Real estate, it's if you keep the property um, long term and you hold on to that, the real estate market always goes up and down. It's guaranteed that we're going to have a drop in the market and guaranteed the market's going to recover. But where you lose money is you're forced to sell in a bad market. So you got to just hold it and get through those bad times. So Holly, what do most people ask you about? Uh, well, I'd say the first thing to know is that it's not all profit. It's slow and steady wins the race. But what they do ask me is usually what they what they could possibly rent their their new property for. Mm-hmm. And that really depends on the condition it's in. Some people, they really struggle with upgrading or putting some money into it to make mm. it market worthy. And yeah. others go to the ex- the other extreme and spend way too much and yeah. there's a happy median in between those those extremes to not waste your money of course holly in those instances how do you determine the price for rent on a property uh yeah so i look at what other rentals are listed for like days on the market how mm-hmm. much comparable homes have rented for so i estimate what the ma- the median price is for a similar home so such as we would do for a, a house to sell. Um, but then I add or subtract what the amount is based on what the property features are, what it might be lacking. So having a garage is a must and not having a garage would limit the potential income. So mm-hmm. that's important. So people. how do you gather and get that information, Holly? Yeah, um, because I'm a Washington State licensed real estate broker, I have access to a lot of data. So not a lot of people use a broker to list their home to rent, but it's a great way to get a lot more exposure and get a property vetted renter uh, or vetted renter for their property. So they can negotiate and execute a proper lease. And uh, the laws are constantly changing, such as the new eviction law that was just changed. So Mm -hmm. it's best to work with a professional rather than trying to be your own chipper Joanna with respect to drafting <laughs> legal documents. So I don't suggest the DIY approach unless you read law for fun in your spare time. So true. <laughs> you know, Holly, one thing uh, has stayed the same from being a financial advisor to the mortgage industry, the, the famous question, when is the right time to invest? Now, we don't have a crystal ball, and if we did, we'd all be drinking Mai Tais on a beach somewhere. That's right. Um, but in your opinion, what is the right time to invest? The Yeah, the... The first thing I look at is the inventory. Mm -hmm. And uh, if there's more homes listed than there is pending, then it's a good time to buy. But if there's not as many homes in the inventory and the market, it has less pendings and there's listings that should sell. Also, buying between October and January is an excellent time to buy. Um, So is the summer. That's kind of when people who have priced their homes too high and they've been sitting on the market, they get a little desperate. Mm-hmm. So they're they're more likely to take a lower offer. Hey, I'm going to be drinking Mai Tais on the beach next month. I know. That's like your story of the year, actually. You I know. I've been trying to travel every <laughs> single month this year. It's, cr- it's crazy. Good but for you, Tina. Anyways, back to you, Holly. <laughs> so how do you determine uh, the costs? Um, well, I... I always start with having an account. You need a you know account for holding the security deposit, uh, but it's also good to have a a slush fund. Mm-hmm. Um, it's good to have at least six months of rent withheld. So if any emergencies come up, it's not going to cause issues with with regards to you know having to liquidate that asset just to cover those expenses because a lot of things can happen. Um, but you should also expect to need to replace the flooring every 10 years and the paint every five years and and those types of things also depending on what kind of house. Does it have a lot of turnover or is somebody going to stay there for a long time? Yeah, and that six months just as your, you know, your primary, it's kind of the, the staple you want to, and Keelan, you know this from uh, the investment side as well, you want to make sure that you have six months of reserves on everything that you have. And so you really want to be careful before getting into your investment property to make sure you have your own roof uh, taken care of, because again, the key is not to be forced to sell in a uh, adjusting market. Well, so Holly, in your opinion, when it comes to real estate investing, what are the risks that you see with real estate? Um, there's, there's a lot of nightmare stories I could tell. (laughs) (laughs) We can have a show on nightmare stories. (laughs) But, uh, really it, 
I think it really comes down to insurance and uh, mitigating risk. So that's all about what, what kind of coverage you have mm -hmm. and how well written your contract is. So um, that that's really kind of at the end of the day what, what's important to to handle those those kinds of risks. But yeah. there's risks from everything to a, a chronic tenant who t tends to want to have you file evictions and drags mm -hmm. that out. That could be really expensive or something that happens that wasn't properly permitted and then suddenly that's expensive. So. So it's really looking at it, what are those possibility of those things are going to be, you know, like Laura talked about difficulty and really in everything that you do, there are the list of things that could happen and just really work with an expert that can advise you on those potential uh, challenges that come up so that you can be prepared for them or at best to minimize any of those going into your investment. But every investment is going to have a risk and a challenge. It's just understanding what those are and preparing the best that you can. Yeah. Yeah. So Holly, um, obviously investing in real estate as an investment property is not for everybody. Correct. Uh, different, different things for different people. Yeah. Some people can't really stomach the eviction process. So maybe not having a long-term rental, but maybe an Airbnb. But mm -hmm. I also feel like People who are going to have an Airbnb should also be the person managing their own. I find that people who hire out management companies and don't have that connection with the property itself affects the rent, you know, the marketability. Interesting. Of so that's that the space. complete opposite of if you have a, an investment, because I was just thinking when you said that you should always have a property manager. Majority don't. Uh, yeah. True investors do. They see the uh, benefit of hiring out a weakness and, and, and really focusing on other things. But that's interesting. On Airbnb, you really want to manage that yourself. Yeah, and not that that's not for everybody either because yeah. that's a lot of work. Yes. So it, yeah. there's there's a fine balance. I mean, it's it's challenging to find sometimes a good workaround. But but yeah, there's so many different ways to invest, and and it's just kind of what matches your personality type. Yes. Well, with an Airbnb too, it's like a business. Like when people come and go out of that, you gotta if you stay on top of that as the one to make sure it meets your standards. Then and I'm sure there's reviews with that and all kinds of stuff, yeah. or it could be a downward spiral. Is that what you mean? When well, it's personal experience. <laughs> <laughs> Recently, I stayed. You know, I, and I travel a lot, so yeah. When I get to stay in Airbnbs, I prefer being able to speak directly with the person who owns the unit. But mm. when people have to, you know, hire out that management company, mm -hmm. and you have to not only deal with the management company but also the owner. It's I see. It's very complicated and it's not not as pleasant. Not as pleasant day. user yeah. friendly it sounds We're not like. Not getting a great rate if you have that <laughs> situation. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Well, what about people who want to invest uh, but don't have any money? Yeah, so uh, it's you know, we like to say real estate is a team sport. So mm -hmm. maybe somebody with money wants to invest but they don't want to deal with the house hunting and the managing and they just need somebody to do all of that and they can, you know, pair up and partner into situations. So there's lots of different ways to match up funds with investment opportunities. We call that sweat equity, right? That's right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, Holly, we've got a few minutes here uh, before we wrap up our time. And I'd love for you to kind of break down uh, questions that you might ask a potential investor that's looking at purchasing an investment property uh, and how to determine what property is going to be best for them personally. Yeah. So if they wanted to, say, start looking for a single family homes to mm -hmm. invest in uh, that you're really going to want to get places that are um, in a good value system that is going to bring equity sooner than later. Mm -hmm. So the, the places that I feel are already maxed out, probably not the best to invest in. Okay. Um, but places in the outlying areas that are still affordable, mm -hmm. but are near schools and potential transit centers and things that are, you know, a lot of the zoning ch laws change. So those yes. are great places to invest in. So, yeah, wherever there is growth is where investments really should be considered. 
Yeah. What about people that are looking at investing in the condo market? Because that's got to be a, a whole nother and a lot more risk there. Yes. Yeah, absolutely. Especially with regards to holding them as rentals, because yeah. uh, a lot of a lot of HOAs don't even allow having rentals or they have a rental cap or they have some crazy rules regarding getting a, a lease. In, yeah. And so you really have to pay attention to those uh, rules and regulations when you're in, you know, looking to Im- uh, invest in a condo. Yes. Yeah. I'm working on the financing side. They better have a rental cap because otherwise they're going to have issues selling uh, properties in a lot of situations. And so, the moving fee is also something to be considered because yeah. uh, Seattle doesn't want us to charge that to the incoming renters. Yes. And in some cases, some of them are up to $1,200. Yeah, it's crazy. So you really have to, again, work with an expert, understand uh, what the laws are around for the rentals, make sure that you're getting into a good property that's going to be able to cash flow, make sure that you have those reserves so that you're set up in case something happens because um, there's always going to be something that comes up and just really understand what you're getting into. Um, But it's a great opportunity, as Holly said, to uh, get an investment and build some equity and have somebody else pay for that investment. So love that. Holly, thank you so much for coming in. I appreciate it. Yeah. And this is your host, Tina Mitchell, signing off for the day. And your co-host, Keelan Harvey. We'll be back next week, same time, same place, right here at 1150 AM at KKNW. Enjoy the rest of your weekend. Tina Mitchell, MLO 145420, and Keelan Harvey, MLO 133075, are licensed loan originators with Gateway Mortgage Group, LLC, and MLS 7233. The views expressed by the speakers on the preceding program are those of the speakers and do not necessarily reflect the views of Gateway Mortgage Group, LLC, nor are they necessarily endorsed by Gateway Mortgage Group, LLC.